618 in Trinidad and Tobago as we take a quick look at the Sangre Grande area this morning. No rain as yet, but uh, as per usual, it is the rainy season, so we need to be mindful that there could be some, some showers bubbling up uh, in uh, mid-morning, early afternoon. That generally uh, tends to be the pattern, but certainly a lot of discussion bubbling up uh, in relation uh, to uh, Petrotrin, Patriotic OWTU because the announcement uh, took many people by surprise when the government uh, announced that uh, the OWTU owned Patriotic Energies and Technologies Limited, uh, that they are the preferred bidders for the oil refinery that was shut down uh, to great dismay uh, from the OWTU just about a year ago. The union now has until the 20th of this month to submit a business plan. How far along is the union with this plan? And if signed on the dotted line, where will the financing come from? Well, we're joined on the telephone by Ansel Roger, President General of the OWTU. And here with us uh, in studio, despite battling a flu, which I understand is known as the Patriotic, uh, is Ozzy Warwick, the Chief Education and Research Officer. Ozzy, uh, very good morning to you. Thanks Thank very you. much for joining us. No Thank balizé this name. morning? No, no, no balis here this morning, Fazio. I know you're trying to be facetious this morning. What we have is uh, the opportunity for Trinidad and Tobago to be part of a national project that we believe will bring back the pride and joy, the jewel, if you may, which is the Pointer Pier refinery. So what we will have is the flame burning once again in Pointer Pier. And to say quite frankly, it is something that we are proud of. We believe it's, it, it is an amazing accomplishment. It is an amazing achievement because hard work went into it. But you haven't achieved anything as yet. But before, before we, because you, you've been named as the preferred bidders, but the, the hard work in many respects now begins. But let me, let me get an opening comment from the President General, Mr. Roger, who's on the line with us. And if the, the line uh, might, is a bit wobbly, we have another alternative to ensure that we do get the comments of Mr. Roger. Thanks very much uh, for, for joining us, uh, Mr. Roger. How do you respond, first and foremost, to accusations of hypocrisy, both by yourself and the union, in saying that there's a confidentiality clause that prevents you from revealing who your backers are? Uh, good morning to you, Fazir, and good morning to the viewers of your morning program. Are you hearing me? Yes, we're hearing you loud and clear. Please go ahead. All right. Thank you very much for the opportunity to bring some clarity to what would have otherwise been something that is not clear as yet. Uh, first of all, let me make it clear that we were part of an international bidding process. It's a process. And that that process carried out its certain requirements. And one of the requirements in the process was for all of the parties, not just OWTU, but all of the parties in that uh, international bidding process to sign what is described as non-disclosure agreement. And that having done that, we would have stick, we would have stuck to our guns in terms of those requirements throughout the process. Had we broke that, we would have been thrown out of the process. As a matter of fact, somewhere along the, uh, the way in that process, I made a comment, just a comment, not directly dealing with the uh, issue, but trying to bring clarity to some questions some reporter was asking. And we were written to by the people who were in charge of the process. It's an international firm, who, which international firm is uh, responsible and, um, for guiding that process, not any local firm, an international firm that uh, has uh, experience in uh, processes like this. And therefore, for that reason, we were not disclosing um, what has happened or what, what was happening all along the way. But rest assured, as this process, uh, um, when this process is completed, and we would have responded to the uh, Ministry of Finance and the Minister of Finance and the government of having won the bid, we will make every single uh, item, every single, all of the information, we will make it public. So just give us some, uh, some little patience again, and we will make everything public. You know, why when should, you the, why should the public be patient, Mr. Roger? If you would allow me to ask the question, why should the public be patient? Because 
Aren't you yeah, someone so who would have championed the cause of transparency and accountability in these matters? Please permit me to finish the point. I'm your guest on the show. I couldn't come in the studio this morning because we are meeting with our international consortium. Sure. So don't don't hustle me with the answer or talk over me. Please give me an opportunity to bring clarity. When you have your international bid wrong for uh, deep water bidding and so on, you don't have those uh, international companies uh, talking about the process and so on because they too would sign non disclosure agreement. But it's just that the OWTU at this point in time, um, you know, we feel that people ought to know, but just give us an opportunity to close the process. We have to respond to the, um, to the ministry and to the government in terms of those 10-point um, requirements. And once we would have done that, we will then make everything public. You can't expect us, well, I think it may be a bit unreasonable, to expect us to be discussing those matters in the public domain, having not closed it, because what that will do, it will um, take us out of the process, and all the work that we would have done may go in vain, and so we don't want to chance that. Yeah? Fair enough, and, and let, me, let me bring Ozzy back into the discussion, uh, because do you see this as a political move as well. I, I, and I'm sure you're going to give us the merits of the, of the, of, of the arrangement and that this is a tremendous uh, bit of work by the OWTU in that sense. But from a political side, the OWTU has effectively been neutered. You're not going to criticize the PNM anymore. Well, I'm not sure why you would say that because we have a tradition and we have a track record. A track record where we've signed the uh, Faisabad Accord and you saw what happened. We've signed an MOU, you saw what happened. We have a track record that notwithstanding... A track record of being used by the politicians no, conveniently. No, a track record of who you mentioned the Faisal Barakford. You, the, uh, uh, Mr. McLeod, who was the, the president general of the OWTU, uh, is now a pariah yeah, but, yeah. With, the, with the union because yeah, but, of, yeah, of his selling out to no, them. But you're contradicting yourself, you see, because you're asking, will we be neutered? And I'm saying to you, no. And we have a track record of never being neutered. And I think but I'm, I'm no giving you evidence where you have been neutered. No, but we with have Errol McLeod, with the Faisal no, Accord, yeah, where the, your, your, your president ticket, general was, you, was signing, was, was shaking but hands you can't with, forget, with, but uh, with you, but Keith Rowley before the last election. You cannot forget Fazir. You cannot forget the massive... So you have a track record no, we have of a track selling record, out. No, we have a track record of demonstrations. We have a track record of uh, voicing for the voiceless. We have a track record of being on the streets in every occasion we have a track record of speaking out uh, against injustice at every corner that is our track record and i don't think anybody could dispute that i've come on many uh, programs right here we have discussed in fact i okay, remember you chastising us for why are you all out in the streets why are you all protesting okay. why are you all demonstrating okay well let, let's let's yeah? say let's say let's say for once i might agree with what you're saying is that going to continue or is that going to be scaled back because you don't want to jeopardize the deal this sweetheart deal that the government is giving you i I think if you recall, the President General have spoken out on several issues already, even during the process. We just can't speak with regards to the details of the deal. That does not mean that we cannot speak out against injustice. In fact, you would recall there was May Day, there was Labor Day, there was the annual conference of delegates. I, I hope you don't forget these things. No, In other words, no, and the good thing no, is, the good thing is, about the good thing is, the good thing is, the good thing is, the good thing the present time and moving forward, can we expect the same level of agitation by the oil field you, workers trade union? I think we have never let down the country. We as the OWTU have always spoken out against injustice. That will never change. We've done so for 83 years and we'll continue to do so for another 83 years. That will not change in any way whatsoever. But we also do think that this is an opportunity for Trinidad and Tobago. This is an opportunity for us to feel proud that a trade union stepped up to the plate. You know what is interesting? I remember on this very same program, you had said to me once in, during our discourse, well, why don't the OWT run the refinery? Well, I know you were, n were not being a hypocrite then. I know you were, it was a serious question. Serious well, question. we took up that challenge, and now you have the OWTU stepping up to the plate, putting together a very uh, strong, solid bid, out competing international, uh, other international bidders. And I think that is something we feel very proud of. And uh, Mr. Roger, if I could bring you back into the discussion. Uh, from what we understand, you could correct me if I'm wrong. The union has until the 20th, well, Patriotic, has until the 20th of this month to submit a business plan. Uh, is that correct, sir? There's a 10 point requirement that was made known to the country. And uh, as we speak, 
The reason why I'm not in the studio with you all there this morning is because we are going to be meeting with our uh, international consortium. They have already begun to arrive in the country yesterday. Some of them came in this morning, some will come in, and tomorrow um, the completion of that consortium will arrive. When they arrive, we are going to meet and to prepare for the first engagement that will take place with the Ministry of Finance uh, on Friday. And so we are working towards meeting those requirements within the time frame that was given to us. And to understand and to provide uh, even more clarity to the government with respect to all of the questions that they would answer. And I can tell you, with respect to the, uh, the people who would provide uh, the the guarantee of uh, feedstock and so on for the refineries operation, the market and, and so on, where the markets will be, the uh, financing and all of those requirements um, will be given to the ministry uh, within the given time frame. And, and Mr. Roger, I, I know there are a lot of issues tied into this and hopefully in, in the course of time in the passage, the, we, we will have the opportunity to speak to you in person because I think that prevent, yeah. pre, pre, allows for a better dialogue. But how do you respond to the political side of it that essentially, uh, despite, uh, and, I, and, and, and Ozzy uh, is clearly making that point that the OWTU remains a forthright voice, how do you respond to the assertion that the Oilfield Workers Trade Union now becomes a puppet of the government leading up to the elections? Well, I prefer not to get into the rhetoric and respond to every little back in every corner, you know, except to say, uh, for you, let us have a dispassionate uh, discussion here this morning, one that makes sense. The OWTU was involved in a, in a international bidding contest. It is likened to us going to the Olympics and beating out all of the other international athletes. And what we should have when we return home is a hero's welcome. What we are having now is all kinds of, um, you know, assertions and so on, which we have asked to respond to. What we would prefer, however, is to stay focused. We would have incorporated, and permit me to tell the country for your program, we would have incorporated a company uh, this patriotic uh, company, Alaska, who, uh, during the Christmas season, having recognized that the refinery has been put up for sale and that uh, the deal has been shut down, and instead of doing the normal things of trying to go for successorship and so on and to represent the workers, whatever, whoever take it over, we accepted the offer incorporated the company, and got involved in the building process. Now, that process is not one where you put in an application and wait for a response. And so people may have um, may thought, may have think that uh, we put in an application and we're waiting for this response, and therefore the announcement came. That is not so. It is a very complex, intricate um, procedure that is very, very costly. Let me make the point. We would have invested millions of dollars to attract and retain the best players in the world in terms of benchmarkers, uh, in terms of lawyers out of London, in terms of um, international auditors and so on out of Canada, and to put together this team that was taken seriously. If you have a serious proposal and you go to any bank, not the bank here in Trinidad, but to those international financiers, they will take you seriously once that is a business proposal that, is, uh, that would see and secure their finances and turn a profit for them. And therefore, we were, involved, we were involved in the refining business as the workers in terms of the technical and the operational and for years. We are now getting in the business side of, of those operations. And that process would have seen us uh, be part of uh, some 77 competitors shortlisted at another stage of the process to 25 and shortlisted to five, shortlisted to three, and then to one. And we think that, that we would have done extremely um, well to beat out our international competitors. And what you have here is a bid that the, um, the company incorporated by the union would have won. And when you compare the others, the other, um, our competitors, the other two who would have been shortlisted, you then see that it is chalk and cheese, not only in terms of the money, but in terms of the type of um, um, guarantee that we would have given in terms of being able to operate the, uh, those assets. And let me, let me ask the question. 
Is it that people have forgot that workers lost their jobs at this point up here and throughout Petrochip? So is it wrong for us to try to uh, acquire those assets at the same time, have the benefit of having those workers put back to work, and at the same time guarantee a reliable fuel supply to the country? I'm, I, I'm not sure why it is that uh, people um, would be asking those questions. But you know, our focus is to complete the process and to ensure that we deliver. And I can guarantee you now from where we stand, for this, we will, we will get, uh, deliver. Ozzy, uh, as far as the, give me your perspective because uh, the, the President General has, has raised questions as to why the scepticism, but there, there, there will always be scepticism when it comes to dealings in relation to, to state assets because we, we have ample evidence of corruption, questionable dealings and so on. Uh, what is your perspective as to how this process moves forward? Well, I think, first of all, we have to meet the 10 deliverables. And what is interesting is that the 10 deliverables, deliverables were made public. That wasn't even a secret. That was made public. Um, the, U the Patriotic, which is the company that the union owns, now have to ensure that each one of these deliverables, which include, and I walked with it here, yeah. number one, confirmation of its ability to finance and purchase the, and, uh, the purchase and operation of the refinery. You have a finalized business plan that addresses other key deliverables, uh, inclusive of the provision of a guaranteed, reliable, and seamless supply of refined petroleum products, a refinery starter plan, which involves any necessary additional work etc this is public so every the whole country knows exactly what patriotic is working on now this is very different so let's take for example those profit sharing contracts that multinational has because i don't see a representative of bhp billiton british gas shell or bp come into any radio program or television program to talk about what arrangements are being made but we are here telling the country non-disclosure agreement confidentiality clause but in the same not, way you're doing exactly but except that we have been able to show to trinidad and tobago these are the 10 deliverables which patriotic has to meet at least there is something by which the country can measure us by and that is very different to any other arrangement and if we are honest and objective we have to admit that that is different and far more transparent than in other circumstances and with regards to your earlier point i just want to make one little mention sure. before i forget sure. about the new, uh, neutering, neutering of, of yes. UWTU, that let you, are, you just, are now basically the handmaidens let, of the PNM. Let me just say that the Oilfield Workers Trade Union stands in full solidarity with the Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association, and we will be with them this afternoon in their march, and Comrade Ansel Roger, who you have on the line, will actually be at the forefront of that march with the president of Tutor. So that just dispels any myth that we are being neutered. We will be out in the streets with Tutor this afternoon. 6.35 in Trinidad and Tobago. A lot more information that we'd like to, to develop with our, our two guests, Ozzy Warwick here with us in studio, the President General of the OWTU, Ansel Roger with us on the telephone. And indeed, hopefully in the fullness of time, we'll be able to have that opportunity to discuss these issues with him live in studio if time and scheduling permits. But let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll develop some further points with our two guests. If we just give one more try, life would be much sweeter. Well, let me tell you, my friend, where we went wrong after Eric Williams' old car breakdown. Six thirty-eight in Trinidad and Tobago as the traffic is moving along in Debi as we look at uh, the camera of TrafficTT.com. Bright early morning sunshine and uh, vehicles heading in different directions. The traffic of the line already building up to head out of Debi proper uh, to uh, link up onto the highway and people getting their their doubles and alupai and everything. But let's return to studio because we have uh, very little time left with our two guests, the President General of uh, the OWTU, Ansel Roger, on the telephone and here in studio, Ozzy Warwick, Chief Education and research officer battling the flu, but will he be continuing to battle together with his other uh, colleagues in, in, in the company Patriotic? You're a director 
of patriotic, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, does that mean you have an even more of a vested stake in, in uh, this whole arrangement? No, I don't have any more vested stake than the country has in patriotic, to say quite frankly. How does the country benefit, Ozzy? I think, first of all, the country will benefit because, one, it will remain in local hands. In other words, we will be producing uh, uh, Local competent products. hands or inefficient hands? Well, one of the things that we have been highlighting and speaking about has been the mismanagement and the political interference, putting square pegs and wrong holes. I mean, we've come here and speak about that ad nauseum. Now is an opportunity where we would not have political interference, where we'd be able to put together a strong management But team. the argument is that there's already political interference, just in the way that this deal is being, is being rolled out. No, I think it's an open uh, bid. The, as the President General indicated, it was an international competition. And we were able to beat back the international competition on the basis of a very strong uh, bid. So I would well, say that... Just on that, just on that point, maybe you could, you could help us. Because I, and I'll, I'll get the, the, the President John to give his perspective on how he actually sees this benefiting Trinidad and Tobago, the country beyond OWT members getting back on the job and all that sort of thing. Because the, the other two in the, in the, in the short list of three, uh, clash and be a wolf. Yes. One was offering 43,000 US per month. Mm -hmm. The other one was offering nothing except paying taxes, yeah. which means that the bar was very, very low. Because I, I'm so trying to imagine yeah. what the other so, 72 were offering. Well, let's just remember two things. One, uh, leading up to the closure, where we came here and we were challenging the government's uh, description of the situation at Petrotrin because they were portraying it as um, this very uh, dilapidated refinery. We're now find on, finding out that, no, actually with the upgrades, it's a fairly new refinery. They were talking about all the losses, etc. And we were saying, no, it can be profitable. All of these things we said, we believed in. And here's a good thing, uh, Fuzzy. Not only did we believe it we're putting our money where our mouth is that's to tell you how much we believed in what we said back then so um, I don't think that it is really a question of how would the of political interference in the bidding process. I think what is necessary at this stage is for really and truly the country to rally behind the OWTU to make this a success. It is critical for this to succeed. Um, why is it necessary? Because um, the country is losing precious foreign exchange every single day, Fazi. This is an opportunity for us to retake and get back foreign exchange back into the economy. Let, let's bring Mr. Roger back into the discussion. M Mr. Roger, uh, uh, amid the skepticism, whether it be media manufactured or with some sort of political intent by the opposition or whatever it might be, what would you say to those uh, in response to the call from Ozzy Warwick and yourself for the nation to rally behind this? And the, the nation might very well be asking the question, why should I rally behind this? What is in it? What is in this deal that could benefit the nation that is Trinidad and Tobago? And right, and as he was correct, if you go to the bank this morning, Fuzzy, whatever the reason you want for an excuse to travel, you so don't seek abroad or so medical attention, uh, education, you will not get it. It's very, very limited. One set of people in this country access foreign exchange. What we want to do is to put back into the system our uh, local economy in this country uh, foreign exchange that the small man uh, will be able to benefit. In addition to that, when this company is up and running, um, after we would have organized uh, the um, or structure, the management structure, void of all of the political interference and so on, and have a clean, efficient operating company with new work cultures and so on. Uh, once we have that up and running and uh, profitable, we are going to offer, here's what we're going to offer. We are going to offer to all of the uh, institutions, the people's organizations, the credit unions, the trade union movements and so on, uh, the NGOs, uh, share ownership in this of this company, uh, Patriotic. We are also going to, at uh, the given time, offer IPOs so that the, um, the, the ordinary man in the street can not just only be a stakeholder, but a shareholder in the Patriotic Energies uh, company. And so, apprenticeship program for the youth, that which was abandoned years ago, so that the young people will have a hope so that they can be trained and they will have the expertise, the likes of their peers internationally to compete on the international stage and to get employment and so on. And, of course, contribution to sports and culture. The fishermen who today do not get a regular gasoline, that will be the first, they will be the first beneficiary of that um, regular gasoline coming back into the system. You know, right now, this is said 
by the government that it is uneconomical to, uh, to import regular gasoline. And regular gasoline will be taxed as, as a feature. And so once we continue to supply both the uh, local um, consumption here, the motoring public with gasoline and, and fuel and so on, and the regional and extra regional, we will be able to not just um, have uh, our people here satisfied, but have foreign exchange come back into the system here in Trinidad and Tobago. And that is what we promised. This is to have a very um, efficient functioning man. We would not have anybody sending by letter as we did with both the UNC and the PNM in the top management of a company, which when you have square pegs and wrong holes, it interferes with the performance of the uh, company. The workers are not the ones to blame. You know. Those workers continue to work throughout the existence of Petrochin. But the political interference, left, right, and center, as the government take over, they put their party hacks at the top, and the company is, is misdirected, and, and therefore, the company's performance goes under. That is not going to happen. We have a legacy to protect and, 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 and to defend with respect to this, this company. And as he is right, the local business community or no entity in Trinidad and Tobago would have stepped up to the plate and got involved in the business is in bidding process. Because what? It is complex and it is very expensive. All of those, um, our, our consultants and so on, international consultants, the consortium, they are paid in what? U.S. dollars and English pounds. Yeah? And therefore, whenever they, they, they travel and come to Trinidad to meet with us, and quite a lot of them on a, a regular occasion, they don't stay at no bed and breakfast um, um, place, but they stay in what yes, they at the higher. And the OWC would have risked millions and millions of dollars, pledged millions and millions of dollars for the benefit of the acquisition of these assets that the country will benefit. And first, may I remind you and the country that we could have taken the position that, listen, we lost uh, one third of our membership. And therefore, what we, should, what we could have done is we could have backed down and said, look, we want to be very conservative with the spending. No, we did not do that. We use the resources that we had to invest in the future of not just the OWTU and the members and the workers who are going to work, but we invest in the future of this country so this country will benefit. Nobody else did that. And I think that even behind the scene after the program, or if you want to do it publicly, you should congratulate us for stepping up to the plate. And I think all of the, the, all of the little criticism and so on and the snide remarks that you make. That is make that makes good for your um, your your program rating and so on. But for serious people, it's a serious proposal to acquire an asset to make sure that the country benefits. You can rely on one organization that's the OWT. And let me tell you, at the end of the day, when all of that is said and done, and you have a company operating separate efficiently, the OWT is going to now, today, next year, and continuing continue its role to continue to be the champion um, for those who are without a voice, without a bread, and so on, and to speak out against injustice, regardless of who is committing that injustice. And, and, uh, therefore, uh, and, you, and therefore, let me, let me remind you, yes. that, remember about three or four weeks ago, Kamala would have invited the trade union to come to, uh, with her and so on, and to unite with her. And if I found it fast and strange that the same Kamala would have uh, been poking holes and condemning um, this acquisition when she should have been congratulating us. That is the level of defeat that comes with all of them. And therefore, we will continue to deal with the issues as we see fit. Yes, the trade union will continue to operate separate, the company will operate separate, bring revenue to the country and so on, all of the benefits. And we will continue to be the OW2 that everybody knows without the support. And, and let, let me bring back uh, Ozzy into the studio. By the way, we should probably send out some reporters to the higher to stand up outside to see who's coming out to, to know who these big financiers are coming out of, uh, of the Hyatt. Maybe they can make their contact with their people if they have their contacts in the Hyatt to find out who checked in yesterday and last night to find out who these people are. But anyway, uh, th that is, that is an, an aside. Patriotic Energy, it's a new company. How do you respond, Ozzy, to the, the perspective that, look, there is no track record. How do you even believe what is being said based on the fact that the OWTU is about workers. It's a, not about administration. It's not about the, the management. 
of such a, a, a facility, such a huge facility and a costly facility with all the different entanglements business-wise yep. in relation to our refinery. How do we not have skepticism about a brand new company? Well, first of all, whilst the incorporation of the company is new, the fact of the matter is that it's the same people who have been operating, who have been running that refinery. With no management expertise at top level. Well, you, uh, we have management expertise as part of the deliverables. In fact, one of the deliverables says very clearly a suitable staffing plan inclusive of senior management. And therefore, we'll be drawing on people who have international experience as well as local capacity. And that is one of the things that we were able to do, link both local capacity with international expertise. And the local capacity is what have been running that refinery. When the decisions, political and senior management decisions, uh, were against the interests of the company, who you think kept products rolling every single day? It has been the same uh, workers, whether it's the operators, whether it's the engineers, whether it's the uh, guys and, and the ladies in mechanics, electrical. It is the workforce itself that keeps the operations going. You see, one of the mistakes we make, it is devaluing what workers contribute to, you know. So it's as though, listen, if you don't have um, uh, senior management, the whole thing will fall apart. When in fact you've been having poor management decisions or wrong petrotrain for many years, but but the refinery continued to produce products and who is producing those products so the point is that there is a vast amount of experience since the days of texaco coming up to trintock etc we have the institutional capacity like no other institutions the institutional capacity to ensure that the refinery will be profitable in the interest of trinidad and tobago that is our commitment and that is our guarantee to the people of trinidad and tobago and and mr roger just in relation to that and talking about that level of Exper expertise and experience and, and the vast experience and bringing it to bear at an administrative level. You just alluded to uh, bringing in an, a new work culture. Aren't you essentially admitting that the previous work culture was deficient? Well, the management, the way in which the, way in which the corporation was managed, we had, a, uh, we had issues no, with that. You said, you said work product. culture. And so, so, so you're basically yes, admitting the that the work culture previously throughout, was deficient. Throughout, yes, of course, throughout the organization the culture would permit, but let me just go back to what you missed. What you missed, what I said, is that we had people coming in by letters. The politicians would have given to, uh, instructed that their party hacks occupy top positions in the company's operation. And that is what we are talking about. Once we get rid of that, and we will rid the company of that, we will have proper money. But you know, when in the days of Texaco, we did not have the political interference and therefore we had the um, uh, management of the operations. What we're going to have is people who have years and years of refinery uh, management and so on in terms of finance, in terms of um, all of the different um, aspects of the top management of the company. They will be running the company for a specific period of time. We will have the understudies so that over time we will be able to have successive and take over take over in full the operation of the company. It is a well thought out um, plan um, for the year. It's not one that we can hustle in a discussion um, a three-quarter hour discussion. I, I, I agree with morning. you 100%, which is why we need to continue this discussion uh, as time goes on, whether with, right. with, with myself or other, other members in, of, of OCM in that regard. But just as uh, from you, you, you highlighted a number of different issues in relation to one, the, the profitability of, of, of the refinery as against the social responsibility with, the, with those who are more inclined towards worker-oriented credit unions, that sort of thing. Do you see that as a challenge? I, 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 and because time is going by so very quickly, I, I'd like to get your perspective on that. Do you see that as a challenge as far as the social responsibility of being more more worker oriented, more people on the ground oriented as against what you would might call sh so-called shameless capitalism of just pure profit. Do you see that as a challenge as far as the viability of the refinery? Well, first of all, to be able to deliver to, um, on all of those um, social areas um, to the country, you have to have an a efficient and viable functioning company. So in the first instance, it's a company that will be managed properly with the correct management uh, in place and so on, and the workers delivering. When that is said and done, you will be able to get all the things that I would have outlined. 
you cannot get that from an inefficient operating company. And what we had for years, and I make the point again, is an, uh, a, a management that was politically directed and, and corrupt and so on. And we are not going in that direction at all. No politician will be able to tell us how to run. I mean, that is what we wanted all the time, to be able to be in the management of the operations, but we didn't get the opportunity. The opportunity presents itself now, and we are going to grab it with both hands and prove to the country that this is something that can be done. Not because it, is, it has not been done um, before means that it is impossible. It is quite possible because we have, as we mentioned, the institutional capacity and knowledge and so on. And, of course, that will be um, buttressed with a good management at the top directing and so on in terms of markets, in terms of um, the whole question of agreements for feedstock for the refinery, and, of course, making sure that we have good margins so that the country will benefit. And, and uh, before time runs out on us, uh, Ozzy, just in, in relation to the timeline. So, so what can either, whether you say the media or the general public or, or, or any other uh, person with a vested interest or just concerned as to whether or not this proposal by Patriotic is actually going to, to come to fruition, what sort of timelines can you give us as to the rolling out of the information that, that people seem to be very, very desperate for? All right, let me first of all say that we are doing something here that none of the multinationals would do. And the reason we do, we do it is because we are patriots and we understand that people are anxious, people may be um, needing clarification. So we've been on almost every radio program. We're here with you this morning, taking the time out to share as much as we can with Trinidad and Tobago because we are committed to what we believe in. Now, we have one month in which to um, meet these deliverables. It doesn't mean that within that period of time, we wouldn't come back from time to time to give at least an update as to how things are going. Are we ready? Are we, um, are we prepared? Um, and I think that is something we'll do. Now, I want to remind Trinidad and Tobago about something. When we developed the OWTU alternative plan to save in Petrotrin, when we delivered it both, uh, well, not both, but to the government, to the board, even to the leader of the opposition, what did we do? We did a presentation at Eastern Credit Union to the entire country as to what was this OWTU's alternative plan. Be that is our track record. And this will be no different. We just have a process to complete. And once we would have done that, we would be able to have a presentation, as we did before, to the country as to this is how, what the business plan would look like, this is what the business model would look like, this is how we're raising the financing, this is what the profitability uh, projection and forecast would look like, this is how Trinidad and Tobago would benefit. That is our commitment. That is our track record. And that is what we committed to. So even though we have the month and our, our team is here preparing for the 10 deliverables, we can also assure Trinidad and Tobago we will be coming back and from time to time giving various updates leading up to that deadline. We look forward to that continuing. Ozzy Warwick, thanks very much for Thank joining you. us. Hope you feel, you feel a lot better as the days go by because you're going to be required uh, by many arms of the media to provide more information in relation to this arrangement. And we appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Roger joining us on the telephone as well. And we look forward to the opportunity to continue this because it's a serious thing in, in, in more ways than one uh, because we're talking about a valuable national asset and, and so many different things tied into it, the fence line communities and business activities and so on. And indeed, we look forward to this uh, discussion. So you congratulate Continue. your WT for no, this, I, 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 <laughs> for I, this I, achievement. I, I congratulate you on putting uh -huh. in the effort. Whether okay. it is shown to be transparent and accountable and properly done in relation to the, the, all the wherewithal of it, let's wait and see. But th thanks very much Thank for you. taking the time to Thank join us Frank. once again. We have the news coming up, and then we move into the second hour of Morning Edition.